Hey, welcome back to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and like this video. Welcome back to Stimmy Films. All right, let's get right into it. So why the young thug and his homie try to finesse and do a little bu uh, bust a jug inside the courtroom? Like, man, you got to be the dumbest people to try to do something like that. I understand like, you know, if they snuck it in to the, you know, to his cell or if they had somebody bring it during visitation or whatever. I've seen that. We all seen that before. We all seen that on TV. We all seen that in movies, right? But for them to actually try to bust a jug in the middle of court with 12, the judge, the cameras watching live stream to millions of millions of people. And Young Thug is supposed to be a millionaire trying to get out of this whole Rico case. So why on earth would him and his homie try to plot to bust a jug like that? He must have gave him a shiv or something like that. He must have gave him a perk and a shiv because it's like, dang, man, why would they go through all that work? The risk, the risk, just think about the risk for the, versus the reward. Okay, so they're risking life pretty much for about five to six hours of a perky buzz. Okay, that's really not worth it at all. Actually, matter of fact, it's probably not even a real whole thing. It's probably pressed out of some last somewhere, you know what I mean? Somebody at somebody's apartment pay some girl to let him come in and they had the press machines in there and boom, woo, 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 woo. Next thing you know, Thugs, homie, gets a hold of one. He talking about, yeah, I got you, homie, I got you. They actually plotted for the dude to wear a suit inside the courtroom. Like, he actually wore a suit to do this whole entire thing in the courtroom just to come out, and as soon as he hands the perk and the shiv to the young thug, then he actually gets ran up on by the 12, and they take him in right then and there. And the 12 make... Uh, Thug actually give up the perk, but if you really look closely, he probably kept the shiv in his suit pocket and then gave the perk to the security guard, the bailiff. So they finessed it. They made it look like it was a perky jug being busted, but in, in reality, he could have gave him whatever and a shiv. And so that way, maybe if you think about it, it's like in that moment, if Thug is doing all that time and sitting down, why would he, he probably would rather give him something to protect himself rather than something to have fun with. And so that's where the illusion is, is that they make it look like it was all about the perk because they know they can beat that case, right? And say, oh, it was an accident. He must have, no, 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 he was trying to shake his hand. He was trying to fist bump him. Maybe the guy was a fan. The the, the lawyers are going to come together and they're going to find an easy way to get out of the hot water. Basically, that's their job is to make sure to find a way to get out the jam, you know what I mean? They call them lawyers, so you got to understand that it's basically they're going to be looking for any way to get out of it. But then, because they can make it seem like the perk thing wasn't Thug's idea, then everybody's going to forget about the fact that he could have even handed him a shiv or like a paper clip or something for him to get out of his handcuffs later. Don't be surprised if you later down the road, somebody tries to try Thug in there and he shiv him or something like that. Or that Thug uh, gets breaks out of his handcuffs during something la at the laundry room. He working at the kitchen or something and he jump out the back window and escape Alcatraz or something like that. So, like, it's a lot of crazy things going on. And it's like, why would why would they risk all of this? And the fact that Gunna is already telling, so they must have went through, who knows, man. And by the way, if they do successfully get that perk inside the bars, it's worth $1,000 for a perk on somebody commissary. So he probably knows somebody he could flip it to or something like that, or that they told him he has to bring this or bring that. You don't even know who the type of people Young Thug is actually interacting with inside the system like that behind the cells. Like... He could be uh, holding somebody's uh, inside of their pocket. Actually, somebody, they took his pocket and they flipped it inside out. So it's sticking out and they hold him and, and pull him and drag him by his pocket like it's a leash or something like that. So allegedly, that's one thing that's being heard is like, and that basically means behind the bar or whatever, that technically means that you are claimed by somebody and that 
they basically like tell you what to do and all this and that. And so you never know if Doug ran into some people who have a lot of power over there and they basically, you know, think of him as just a joke. So they might boss him around and basically take advantage of him and tell him what to do and make him, a hu- you know, like you. He- like humiliate him in front of everybody in the population and maybe they they told him that he has to bring a perk or he has to bring something like that so maybe somebody pressured him into trying to finesse and do all of this and you know it's like at the end of the day who knows what's really going through their minds man after all that they've been through these guys clearly are not smart dude had a chance to to actually get away from the hood and get away from all of this he had millions and millions of dollars but at the end of the day him and gunna and all of them people inside of uh, YSL, all the people who, you know, told and this and that, they couldn't sit down for the seasons and they, the time, you know, the crime they was doing, they didn't want to do the time. So they told and got out. But in Thug's case, to have millions and millions and millions of dollars and you still find a way to be put on as the ringleader for all of this and have all the blame put on you and all the people you thought was under you and that you was going to be able to be their boss and tell them what to do and have them do all the dirty work for you and all came and throw him under the bus. They all basically ratted him out now. And that's the situation that's going on. And so maybe he got a lot of anxiety. Maybe he got a lot of issues and and that's maybe why he needs one and hope he came through try to, you know, give him that yerky and all that. But it's a whole lot of things going on. But the fact that he's a millionaire and he still (laughs) involved himself in the streets like that, to the point where they got caught, not only just for something minor, not only for something he can on his own, but an entire Rico be put on them. Like, come on, man, you got every single opportunity that most people won't get, and you still messed around and caught the Rico. And yeah, I know it's a lot of stuff that happened years and years ago when he was still one foot in the game, one foot in the streets, right? But you got to think about it. As soon as he gets signed, as soon as he starts getting a buzz in his city, as soon as anything like that happened, you got to understand to start moving differently where you can't just be involved in things where people are getting locked up for. Like, you got to really look at it like, okay, if anything, if they get blamed for anything or anything come back on them, that's all the millions of dollars that they lose on opportunity costs, sponsors, all these deals and little brand and brand deals whatnot right and so you got to think about you know he made millions but then that the mistakes them choices that he made to end up having a rico be put on them cost him tens of millions of dollars in the long run because now it's like who's gonna want to really do business who's gonna want to work with people who get implicated on ricos like that and you see how things are going for six nine and stuff he has to basically ride with a whole nother crew start a whole nother thing over and you know uh, now you become a meme or something basically and that's the relevancy that it takes on and it's like who's gonna want to uh, make uh, the face of the brand you know the face of some type of brand and with the whole history and everything and you don't you don't know what he's going to get into you don't know if he's changed you don't know if he's still got things that they haven't found out about that could still come out later and so basically at the end of the day, y'all gotta understand it's it's a difference between like if you have to be uh, moving like that in the streets, whether it's like you trying to survive versus you personally chose to involve yourself when you necessarily didn't have to do anything like that and you could have just focused on getting the bread. And so it's a decision for everybody to make, but make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment down below, and I'm gonna catch you on the next one.